Welcome to Bama Blind. I'm Beverly and I'm back in front of the camera this week because I have a topic to talk about. I hadn't planned on talk, talking about this topic today, but this actually happened today. And so I switched up some things that I was going to do and I thought this really was interesting because I have had this on my mind to talk about for quite some time. It kind of hit me this morning when Gretchen and I were out walking. We'd been out walking about 35 minutes and we sat down on a bench like we do a lot of times. And uh, it was very quiet, very peaceful outside. And a lady came walking by. Uh, there were several walkers in the morning. So a lady came walking by and she stopped right in front of me. And that happens a lot. And she's very quiet, very polite. And she said, oh, you have a service dog. And I said, yes, it's a guide dog because I'm blind. And she goes, oh, a guide dog. And I said, yeah, she and I have been walking all, mo well, all morning, I told her. We've been walking all morning and we we're just resting a minute to head back home. And she said, so your guide dog, does she do things for you? And I said, yes, mostly she guides me. And um, so she said, she said, does she turn the lights on and off for you? And I said, no, she doesn't turn the lights on and off for me because really with my kind of vision, I can't really see any better in light than, you know, not in light, but in general, people that use a guide dog are, they have such severe visual loss that most of the time lights don't help so the trainers don't spend a lot of time and I was educating her on that trainers don't spend a lot of time on that kind of task so she said does she does she bring you your shoes does she get your shoes and bring them to you and I said no she doesn't bring shoes to me because I can find my shoes I typically leave them in the same place, but even if I don't, I, it's my fault. I have to go search for my shoes, but once I find my shoes, I can put them on and I can, you know, I can get out of the chair to go find my shoes. Or if I'm asleep and it's time to get up and I can find my shoes, um, no, she doesn't bring my shoes to me. And she goes, does she, she was really excited by this point because she's like thinking, what does this dog do? And she said, does she go to the front door and bark when somebody rings your doorbell so that you know. And by this time, I, it wasn't funny to me. It, she wasn't laughing. She wasn't um, jovial. She was just asking very poignant questions, very articulate lady, very quiet. And I said, no, I can hear the doorbell. So there's no reason for her to go to the door. So before I could tell her what my guide dog did, she already had three things in her mind that a guide dog would do for a blind person. And, and it made me think that the general population, the general population, according to my exposure and the questions that have been asked to me over the past many years since I've been functionally blind, is the general population really doesn't understand what the difference in task that their sight is primary for and what the task that they use their ears for and the task that they might need their hands for, the sense of touch, or even the task for smell. Um, and, you know, it's it always baffles me. I had a... Um, a medical professional asked me once, well, and she was, she was just talking to me. She said, well, what does your dog do for you? And, and it was the tone that she said, it, that is a very appropriate question. When you walk into a restaurant and the, you know, the people that own the restaurant, the managers can't say, um, give me your paperwork for a service dog. They can't say, what is your disability? The one thing they can say is, what does your dog do for you? And it has to be service oriented. But this medical person who's very well educated and a friend of mine, and she asked, 
well, what does your dog do for you? And I said, well, she guides me. She guides me around obstacles and she helps me find doors and she helps me find uh, objects that I have targeted her for. Um, so it, it gets to be really interesting when you, when you understand that the general population doesn't really understand, first of all, what limitations, what tasks uh, are difficult if you don't have sight and what tasks you really are capable of doing if you don't have sight. So I'm perfectly capable of finding my shoes if I haven't like thrown them, you know, it takes me a long time if I throw them in a corner and I forget where they are. That's my fault. But once I find them, I certainly can put the, the left shoe on my left foot and the right shoe on my right foot. And I can match my shoes. They feel the same, they're tactile. Now, if you gave me pictures of my shoes, you know, two-dimensional pictures, there's no way that I can do anything with that task. It's two-dimensional. I can't touch it or smell it or hear it or taste it or, you know, examine it with, with my hands. So it's not really two-dimensional things I, I'm not able to do. But <laughs> the, uh, the one thing that my, uh, I talked to a friend today about this because I was just so taken back and this friend and I, were, we were talking about dogs in general and uh, my dog is a German Shepherd. So we were talking about that and she said, well, I would just assume just out of my general knowledge of you and you know, not knowing anything about how guide dogs are trained, I would think that she would help you uh, not run into things. And that's basically what a guide dog does. So my guide dog, to answer the lady's question this morning, what does your guide dog, what does she do for you? And then she jumped in with three things that were totally not related at all to sight loss. But what my guide dog does for me is she does guide me around obstacles. She allows me to walk at a normal pace or even a rapid pace. Uh, so, so I can actually keep up with pedestrian traffic or actually go around pedestrian traffic. We've done that many times where people were just walking too slow for Gretchen and I. And so, you know, I had to kind of get her to one side or the other and we pass the people. The other thing that she does for me that I would not be able to do on my own independently without a cane or without a guide dog is to find the entrance to a building. So I could, I could go all around a building looking for the entrance because that's almost a visual thing. You have to go touch it with your hand or an extension of your hand, which would be a white cane, and find the entrance to a building. A lot of times the, the you can hear a portico, so that's good. You know, you can use your ears. You can hear a portico. Sometimes there's a little buzzer and you can hear that. So if you're coming to, up to a building from a parking lot, you can hear that. But instead of taking, you know, instead of using all the guesswork and clues with a guide dog, with Gretchen, all I just say is inside, Gretchen inside, Gretchen inside. And she knows to take me to the door and it's my job to reach up and find the handle and push it or pull it, which makes it very easy for me to go in and out because now I know exactly where the door frame is. I know exactly where the door has swung out to. So I know I'm not gonna run right into it because I'm holding the door with my right hand as Gretchen and I are going in through the doorway uh, while I'm holding her harness with my left hand. So. So finding doorways is outstanding because before I had Gretchen, I could I could walk up and down a city sidewalk and not find the doors into different um, establishments. And that was even with the much, much better mobility vision than I have now. Uh, I, it's just It was just very hard for me to distinguish what is the door, what is just an indentation in the building, what is a long window. I just can't do that. But a dog can find the door and actually Gretchen, in a lot of cases, will put her nose up toward the doorknob. So if I follow her head, if I lay my right hand on her head and just follow her muzzle on out, her uh, nose will be right at the doorknob. 
So, and if not, she will just sit and wait for me to find the doorknob. And so that's just an awesome trait. One of the other um, tasks that she's able to do is find a chair. Uh, I know I've probably shown this a couple of times on some videos with me downtown and uh, they have these cast iron benches all around. That was where I was sitting today. But as long as I say chair, Gretchen identifies anything to sit on as a chair. So downtown, if there, if we are around a general vicinity of one of the benches and I say, let's find a chair, she'll go find it. Uh, if, if I'm three blocks away from one, she's just, you know, she's clueless. So it's got to be within our vicinity, but she will find me a chair and it allows me to sit down. Otherwise, I'm just standing there and I can't. I cannot go and, you know, sit down like everybody else does and just, or look, you know, 10 feet away and find the chair. So anyway, the next um, task that is really, really awesome that Gretchen can do, that many guide dogs can do, and that blind people are so grateful for, is help us navigate inside of a public restroom. Public restrooms for blind people are nightmares. They are just like the worst place we can possibly go. I have known many blind people that have held their bladder for so long because they just don't want to go navigate a public restroom. They're all laid out differently. And if I walk in with Gretchen, first I say inside. So she finds the door to the restroom and we go inside. Once we get in there, she will go around any obstacles. A lot of times there are partitions. Um, you know, there are things in restrooms and you never know what you're gonna find. So. Then I say, Gretchen, let's find inside, which means a stall, because that's just another door for her. So she will pass by. Now there might be stalls with no one in it, but if the door is closed, she won't stop at that door. She only stops at the stall door where the door is ajar. And so if, you know, we pass by all of these banks of, of stalls and I think, well, you know, this is not very good because all of the doors are closed. I might push on one. Certainly if it opens up, no one's in there. Um, but she at least gets me to where those are. And you know, everybody knows that when you, since the day you were born, you were taught, oh my gosh, in a public restroom, don't touch a thing. Well, blind people have to touch. We have to touch. So as long as you have hand sanitizer, as long as you have soap and water, it's perfectly fine to touch surfaces. Just don't touch your mouth or your face or your clothing or you know anything like that. But you can certainly go and um, use hand sanitizer. Touch the things you need to touch to know where you are because you don't have the sight to zero in on that. Um, to find toilets, you know, that, that sounds pretty personal, but again, I just tell Gretchen, I need a chair, find a chair. And in the large, like there's a large uh, family size restrooms where, you know, they're, they're really big. And so, you know, the, the toilet could be in one corner or another corner or another corner. So I just tell Gretchen to find the chair and she will go right over to the toilet. She won't touch it, she'll just go and face it. And then with my foot, I can kind of probe out and say, okay, there's the front of the toilet there. So, you know, that's the way we do it. And uh, then when it's time to wash hands, I say, let's find the counter. We have to find the counter because usually where there's a counter, there's gonna be a sink. And then I have to, they're never the same, but I have to always find the faucet. Um, I always have to usually at some point on a wall, you know, near a sink is gonna be a soap dispenser and there will be paper towels. But even if there are no paper towels, that's okay. I'll drip dry, I've washed with soap and water. Uh, if I do find the paper towels, uh, once again, that's so hard. Gretchen's not gonna find that, it's on the wall. But if I find the paper towels, I dry my hands, I say, Gretchen, now we need to find the trash. Well, she'll go all the way across the room to find the trash. She knows what that means. So she finds the trash because think of it, if, you're, if you've got your eyes closed and, and you've washed your hands, you've dried your hands, now where do you put your paper towel? There's no way unless you can see 
or unless you now contaminate your hands again and start touching everything that you find in that trash can. So, so a guide dog is trained to do those kinds of things that blind people need every single day. This is not something that would be a nicety. Going to the restroom is a necessity. So Gretchen is, is, is trained to do those kinds of things. When we're walking in our town area, she's trained to target trash cans. People need trash cans. So she knows you know, how to find those kinds of things. Um, so the, it, it, it really baffles me that the general population, I really, really think that this morning, the ladies inquiry, her, her assumptions of what a guide dog did for a blind person were totally clueless. I'm just gonna say they were clueless. And all I can figure, because I've gotten these questions so many times, that all I can figure is the general population. People, if you have, if you have uh, just normally functioning eyes and normally functioning ears and other senses, you use all that as a unit, maybe? Maybe? I'm, I'm just saying, maybe it's all used as one unit and you haven't dissected out what part does what. I know for a fact, because I have so many sighted people who do explain things to me. And many of the times, 50% of the time, the things they are explaining are things that I already know through my other senses. So something in my surrounding, like, hey, there, a car horn just sounded. Well, I know that, I heard that. I was I was watching a movie. We we were watching a movie. It was so funny. But we were watching a movie with my uh, brother and sister in law. It was a great movie. Uh, my cousin Vinny. If anybody's ever watched that, it was hell. Oh gosh, never mind. Um, so we're watching the movie, and I love it because my brother in law is so verbally descriptive. So he was doing the audio description. It was great. Except for he got to the point that everything that was going on on the screen he was describing whether it was sound or sight and so I said you know I can hear the car horn and I can hear what the lady is saying to the guy so you know that's okay uh and he was just doing his best he was doing a great job but it just went and this was so many years ago this just shows me that you 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 forget, you don't understand. It, it maybe not forget, and maybe you don't understand. You have just never examined what your eyes do versus what your other senses do and what you can do without your eyes. I had somebody ask me, how do you wash your hair if you can't see? And I, you know, I really had to think about that. Well. I always thought that when people washed their hair, they generally closed their eyes so that, you know, the lather, the, the suds, the shampoo doesn't get in your eyes and burn you. I mean, that's what I've always done. And I just assumed that's what people did. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. But, you know, I had to explain, well, you know, I get in the shower and my hair gets wet, and then I take the pump with my left hand, because I'm left-handed, and I pump the shampoo into the palm of my right hand, and then I rub it together, and then I put all the shampoo up on my head, and I lather my head up, you know, and then I wash my hair all the time. My eyes are closed, because I don't want the shampoo in my eyes, and then I rinse my hair with my eyes closed because I don't want shampoo getting in my eyes and burning it. Uh, and then I open my eyes. You know, it's not that I could see any better in the shower. I just naturally open my eyes. But I wash my hair with my eyes closed because I don't want, you know, I don't want my eyes getting burned with shampoo in them. So I thought that was an interesting question. How, you know, how do you wash your hair? But for people that have never thought about it, you know, I would, I would hope that you would think about it. At least close your eyes for 15 minutes or so and just think of the things that you could do without looking. 
and you would be shocked because as long as you have hands and fingers and functioning legs and feet and uh, ears and uh, the, your sensitivity of touch and even smell and taste, um, there are so many things you can do. Not only uh, retrieve your shoes and put them on, you can tie your shoes. Tying is so tactile. Um, you have to learn the skill. It's not something that you can close your eyes and just quickly do. You, you might have to practice it a couple of times. For people that have recently lost their eyesight, they assume I can't, I can't tie anymore because I can't see, but that's not a visual task. They just assume it is. People that, uh, guys I, had, I know have said, well, now I can't shave anymore because that's a visual task. It really is not a visual task because your face is three-dimensional. You can absolutely tactily feel. Uh, it's, it's just like creating a, a sculpture piece with your hands versus painting a picture two-dimensionally. So, so shaving is, is a definitely doable uh, for women uh, applying makeup, even though there are color issues and things, the face is three-dimensional, so it can be done. You just have to learn the techniques. And um, like I do all my makeup, I do all my hair. But, but I have people that just assume that my husband does it all. So, you know, I have people assume that, that uh, well, who would actually button your shirt? Well, this, this jacket has snaps, but who would actually button your shirt? That's not visual that you think it is because you're looking at it. But I guarantee you, I could look at that camera right now and stick a button in a hole and pull it through and button a, a button. Um, so the point of this is that people, understandably, I guess, just have not thought about what you can do with your eyes that's different than what you do with your ears, that's different than what you do with your taste or smell and your fingertips. You know, there it it just is it just takes a few minutes and certainly before you blurt out what you think a service dog does for a blind person, think about it. Let me close my eyes and think or just wait and let the person answer the question because there's there's absolutely no reason for the dog to turn on the light switch. Um, a light switch is in the same place each and every time on the wall and my fingers work fine and I can go find the wall and turn on the light switch. It doesn't move around. Uh, now, if I'm completely blind with no light perception, I might have to ask someone, are the lights off? But I can certainly get out of bed or get out of my chair and go turn the light switch off if somebody tells me. There's even apps for that. So, you know, completely blind people don't even have to worry about that either. All you gotta do is hit the app and it'll tell you the light is on, the light is off. And it's a sensor, it's a light sensor. So, you know, and, and, and the, the very last thing is, is that I certainly don't need Gretchen to go bark to tell me that somebody has rung the doorbell because I can hear the doorbell just as easily as I can hear her bark. So that would be useless, absolutely useless. Now, if Gretchen learned to tell me who's at the door, that's different. That would be really nice but I can still call out to the person and ask who's there. So, you know, I guess we still get around that. <laughs> so I just thought I would share my experience this morning. It just blew my mind. And as I walked home, I thought, you know, this is really what I want to upload today in my video. I really want to upload this and, uh, and talk about it because it does go on you know, it's gone on for a long, long time in my life where I get asked questions and I realize, you know, I realize after all these years, 10 years of being functionally blind, people just really don't have any idea 
what their eyes do or what their ears do and what you can rely on your ears to do for you regardless of your eyes what you can rely on your your hands to do for you your sense of touch regardless of your eyes even your sense of smell you can walk into someone's house and say you know it, it, the, the house isn't clean and your sense of smell tells you that and you don't have any functional vision but you know that there's something amiss so I just wanted to share with you that experience and understand that guide dogs have very very specific tasks for blind people and it doesn't have anything to do with service dogs for people who are paralyzed or service dogs for people who are deaf um, or service dogs for people who have seizures. Uh, guide dogs are specifically trained for people who don't have functional sight. So I hope this has been informative. Uh, it really wasn't supposed to be entertaining because I don't think it's funny and I really would like to educate people. Uh, I just thought it was bizarre. I, I really thought it was really, really interesting that this intelligently, seemingly uh, smart lady had such an unusual perception of what blindness skills were or were not. So if you like this video, y'all give me a thumbs up. It helps my channel a little bit. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of stuff. If you want to learn more about sight loss and visual impairment and how people like me live. And um, I will upload uh, very, very soon. And until then, I hope you have a really safe and healthy and happy rest of your week. And I will talk to you next time, everyone. Bye-bye.